Throughout my first few years at high school and also in the first three years of university, I didn't really do percussion very well, I didn't really practice very much, and my technique was extremely poor. Whoa. And I'm really excited to see how someone like you would play this piece. Yeah! Woo. Oh, that was a good one. And he just needs to fix a few things like the grip, and the technique, and then it's gonna be like excellent. It's gonna be like STR. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam, and it's time for yet another Let's Watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs Robert Utomo, Will Flinner, Ryan Carlisle, Sang Jun Han, Greg Harris, Dom's Dominic Chun, DP Newberger. Marimba Maurice, Lucas Faber, and Scott Rader, thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Hayden. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash untan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again, I hope you've been well. And yes, today we're going to be watching some more videos on today's Let's Watch episode. And we're going back to the basics, going back to the classic Let's Watch format, where this segment started off as just marimba solo videos and I haven't done a marimba solo reaction video in a long time so now's the time but yes before I get into that this blue hoodie the studio family retro logo hoodie which is now available in light blue and dark blue is available on the merch site at adamtampercussion.com forward slash merch and now to today's topic which is marimba solo so the reason why I like to watch other people play marimba solos is because it reminds me of when I was in university when I just figured out my affinity for marimba throughout my first few years at high school and also in the first three years of university I didn't really do percussion very well I didn't really practice very much and my technique was extremely poor and so for me, it's a great pleasure to watch all these videos of high school and university players playing so, so good, like at the really, really high level. And that's something I've always wished I could have done when I was at that age, but that's okay. I'm old already. It means even more because it's coming from you guys. So if you ever want to submit any videos to this segment, it's at adamtampercussion.com forward slash submit. Okay, let's look at our first video, which is from Liam McManus. Now, it's a piece called October Night by Michael Barrett. I know the piece. I'll tell you about it in a second. Hi, Adam. This is my performance of October Night in the third studio class of my second semester at the Eastman School of Music. Whoa! East Coast, best coast. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Eastman is definitely one of the top 10 music schools in America and possibly in the world. Although at a glance, it might just seem like a technical exercise or chop burner. There's lots of great musical moments and opportunities to work on voicing and pacing. Basically the reason he assigned the piece to me. Well, that's some really good teaching. Not to mention note accuracy is a real challenge. I digress. Hope you and the rest of the studio family enjoy. Well, thank you so much, Liam. The truth is actually, this is a piece that I learned pretty much to boost my marimba solo chops as well because I couldn't play technically very well in university. I had a very late blooming curve, if that makes sense. And this was after I came back from America and I'd met a couple of Eastman guys at Chosen Vale, the percussion seminar that no longer exists. I met a guy called Thomas who was in his second year at Eastman at the time and he was playing this piece. So I also bought a copy and took it home to learn. And it was definitely a very enriching experience because yes, it does have a lot of laterals. Yes, it does have a lot of chop burner sections. But as you said, it has a lot of musical moments and I'm really excited to see how someone like you, who is from Eastman and also studies under Michael Barrett himself, would play this piece. So let's watch. All right, so this is obviously Eastman, <laughs> as we know from the context, and this is a really nice room. Man, Eastman's got it good. And they have, of course, a Malatek marimba. I can only assume that that is the famous MJB marimba. <laughs> but yeah, let's see how Liam goes. His rolls are nice. I do think it's a little bit soft. I think the mallets might be too soft. Malatek mallets. I'm guessing those are Stevens. Stevens LS1 or LS17 or something. Oh, no, he said it's an LS15. Okay. Right. Multi tonal mallets. It's got good technique though. He's tilting the mallets. I think he could alter the roll speed a little bit more. Yeah, he could definitely alter the roll speed more, but that's, that's a nice finish. 
Uh, I don't remember whether the sheet music said you could phrase these more freely, but it does seem like they're a little bit counted out. Uh, I feel like he could have done that crescendo a bit more, but it's good. Let's go. I mean, the rolling, again, the rolling is actually quite good, but it just, I just feel like there needs to be more of something. Maybe the build-ups need to be longer, I don't know. Like, yeah. Definitely needs to change his roll speed because it's it's just too much of digger 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 digger. But again, I don't know what the teaching style of Eastman is. Maybe they like that. Uh, here's the one-handed roll. So I feel like one-handed roll is a good opportunity to try and flex the roll speed a bit. Ah, uh, he's doing it. He's doing it. He is doing it. That's good. Yeah, nice. That was a good transition from the one-handed to the normal world. So it looks a little bit stiff here, but it's okay, it's okay. Again, I'm not Michael Burrett, so <laughs> I don't want to critique it too much. Oh, good transition. I struggled so hard with these one-handed rolls when I first did this piece. He's got them really well done though. And the Stevens mallets help a lot too because they're super light. I like that he has taken care to not be too harsh with the rolls, which is nice. The tone is really nice. Cool. Yeah, like this, really nice. Smooth swell. All right, mallet swap. It's going to use Burrett 13s. I personally never really liked Burrett mallets. Just putting it out there, <laughs> but you might make it sound good. Oh. Dun dun dun. Oh man, I miss this piece so much. Oh, that bottom A is getting bashed. It might just be the recording. His ladder was a very smooth. Yeah, good. This bit's my favorite, because it's just like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. <laughs> it's like where you can take a break for a bit. I feel like this bit can be more intense. Notes are all very good. And one hand roll, very nice. I don't think the mallets suit. I think they're too hard, which is making him worry about cracking the bus. I can see he's holding back a little bit in the loud sections. And you see like these one handed rolls become a lot more difficult because the mallets are so hard. Oh, 
Oh, that's some good roll speed there. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> I like the I like the breath ins. That's clever. Oh, very smooth one-handed rolls again. That's definitely his biggest strength in this performance so far. Nice that he's being very careful. Again, like the whole performance, he's been very careful to not bash it. I can totally respect that. I feel like his louder notes. Oh, good breath, good breath. Oi. And then it suddenly becomes Blue Ridge here. <laughs> I feel like he could have dragged that slow down a bit more, but that's okay. I feel sorry for that A, man. <laughs> Again, very even laterals. His laterals are good. <laughs> even even did a click. See, this should be getting much bigger. Oh, I used to hate this, but he's doing it pretty good though. And then. one-handed rolls, once again. And see, so he's using the tilt really well, which is nice. I know, I know Michael Barrett really likes the tilts too. Glad he agrees. <laughs> so I like that he's very careful with his hand movements too. He doesn't do too many fake lifts or anything. He's just very slowly moving his hands around. And here he's just using the very tip of the mallet to finish it off. And that's it. <laughs> Woo! East Coast, best coast! Yeah! Alright, so that was actually... <laughs> again, I always say this all the time, but it was very good. It was very, very good. I think Liam, overall, his laterals are very good. His one-handed rolls are very good. The note accuracy is more or less perfect. I don't think there was any wrong notes in there at all. Three things I think he could think about. The first thing is his roll speed, especially in movement one. The corral roll speed is kind of maintaining the same velocity at the moment. It's just digga, 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 digga. So maybe experiment with the roll speed. I think the corral mallets at the beginning are totally fine. They're LS15s because you can get a pretty soft sound out of them. But if you wanted to, you could try just even a little bit more warmer mallets to make it so that you can roll faster without worrying about that core coming through. Uh, stuff like that. The second thing that I think he could work on is he could have more intensity in the loud sections because I felt like when it got to the really big square sections where you have There really wasn't enough intensity to make me believe that it was any different from the rest of it. Like it still sounded good, but it didn't sound like, wow, this is like the climax. So maybe if he used slightly softer mallets, something that he wouldn't be afraid to hit. I could see he was trying to be very careful towards the lower register. And then that A is like so important, but because the mallets are so hard, it comes off as this really like Pfft. 
Again, Eastman's style of playing is very different to how I think, of course, so full respect to that. The final thing is I reckon you could play more with the spacing and the timing of certain things. Now, obviously, you don't want to be too extreme with like rubato and things like that. You don't want to rubato too much, otherwise people think you don't know what the music is. <laughs> but it would be nice in the chorale sections to have some more breathing. Like, there were some sections where Liam visibly breathed and he also even gave himself a before the drop if you like, and that was really nice, like really enjoyable to have some sort of humanized phrasing. Like but just maybe give yourself a bit more time, especially when there's accelerandos, like there's accelerando, that's a really bad way of saying it. Accelerando. But otherwise everything is very good. Liam's technique overall is very good. The notes are quite accurate. And he seems to be thinking about the musicality as well. Like he said, he didn't think of it as a technical exercise. So good job, man. It's really, really good. And you're in really good hands. You have Michael Barrett teaching you, so. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Okay, the next video we're going to watch is Mirage. Yes, Mirage is one of the classic Japanese solos of all time, and it's from Bradley Fremda, who says, any general feedback on the piece, there is a chance I might use this piece for grad school auditions in the fall. Now, this submission is a little bit old, so I might have missed that deadline, sorry about that. But I'm really excited because Mirage is considered like a seminal Japanese piece, and I really wanna check it out, so let's watch. Man, this is a really funky background. <laughs> we got this mosaic looking background and nothing else. I assume this might be like a title screen or something. Well, let's go. Mirage. And this is such a classic piece. You know, I have full respect for people who play like Keigo Abe and all these other like classic Japanese composers. Oh yeah, that clarity though. Oh, this is a Yamaha five octave. Nice, look at the spacing. See, with Japanese pieces, you need to have lots of drama. Give us the drama, yeah. Oh. Oh, nice, right on the tip there. He's being very careful with his touch. You see, his roll speed is really good. And he's using different parts of the bar as well. Oh, that octave grip. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> look at this, look at his sevens in the left hand. So nice. Everything is so nice. I think you could leave it a bit louder for longer, but that's okay. He is sticking his thumb out a little bit, but that's fine. Hey. Look at the way he treats the consonant chords. Oh. Woo. Mm, the lateral sounds a bit crunched in his right hand. Woo. He's really got that dramatic character, I love it. Let's go Bradley, let's go. <laughs> I like how careful he is about all his movements, even the smallest movement he's like, I'm not moving. Oh. Hey, that was a good one. Really clean. Oh, oh, oh. That, that was good, but some, some wrong notes, but still good. This is my favorite melody of Mirage. Oh. Brad is just like, I'm gonna hold you in suspense for longer, guys. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, the most noticeable thing about this is that Bradley, like, technically wise, he's quite confident. And he knows the piece really well, musically. Oh, there's some adjusting there. 
Right, here we go. Man, the voicing, his voicing is great. I have a feeling he might be left-handed because he lifts up his left hand a lot. Oh, another fix. Maybe if you tape your mallets, a bit easier. Hmm. Interesting. Oh. Like he's, he's working very hard, he is. His right hand lateral is not quite as clear as I'd like it to be, if that makes sense. We're hearing it's still some crunching in these runs. <laughs> but he's really good at embodying this, the cheekiness of this piece. Look at that, <laughs> and it fits to the mosaic. Oh, that's cool. All right, so a lot of things we can pick up about that, uh, positive things and some things that I think could be improved slightly, but overall, it's a pretty decent performance of what is actually a very technically difficult piece. A lot of people think Mirage because it's single line and it doesn't have as many notes, it's a little bit easier, but actually because it's single line, you have to work harder to get the voicings to stand out and you have to work harder to get the distinctions between the leading lines and the accompaniment lines. It's a lot of work. And for Bradley, I think the best thing that he's done is that he's learned all the notes really well. He plays quite confidently. He didn't seem to hesitate at all. Like all the difficult fast runs, he just took them on, even though some of them were a little bit crunchy. And what I mean when I say crunchy is that you can see that sometimes his laterals are not very clear. And as a result, if you slow the video down, you're not getting very clear, like ticker, 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 ticker. It's partly to do with that right hand lateral. But you can also see in Bradley's playing overall, when he plays the faster and more hectic sections, the mallet height drops dramatically. And he becomes a bit more tense, like his elbows start to come inside. And that's because I think it may have to do with the fact that the mallets are not taped, which is why he also had to adjust the mallets a few times. Like if he tapes the mallets, then he doesn't have to grip them so hard, then he won't be so fatigued. And then the technique I think will be a lot more flexible. Bradley did really well regardless to learn the notes so well. It's fully memorized from what I can see. And he just needs to fix a few things like the grip and the technique. And then it's gonna be like excellent. It's gonna be like STR. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much to Liam and Bradley for today's videos. Once again, if you wanna submit any videos, it's at adamsconstruction.com forward slash submit. I'm always happy to watch more videos of Marimba solos because nowadays we're getting a lot of DCI and WGI videos, which is great. I have a lot of them. But if you have any Marimba solo stuff, I would also love to watch those very, very much. <laughs> and if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. And if there's anything you thought of today's videos, please leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you because sometimes I don't catch everything, so it's good to hear from you guys as well. And also, please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads because I upload new content on this channel every single week, including stuff like Let's Watch, including reviews. We just reviewed a drum kit, like I don't even play drums. <laughs> All kinds of fun stuff on this channel, so make sure you hit that red subscribe button and also the notification bell to know whenever I upload something new. All right, thank you so much for watching today's Let's Watch episode, and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of... The studio, good night. I finally stopped running now. With you, I found my peace somehow. Let go of every thought that was holding me back. Yeah. I'm in love with you in every way. The joy you give me every day.